So we started this trust barometer uh, after the battle in Seattle in 1999, which you may remember, um, which was the NGO storming the World Trade Organization, protesting uh, globalization, and that uh, it was deeply unfair. And we wanted to know, who are these people? <laughs> and it turned out that they were the most credible institution in the world, well ahead of business, well ahead of government. So we uh, carried on, um, and we started to see uh, about 2006, 2007, the rise of a person like yourself as the most uh, credible person relative to government ministers, relative to CEOs, twice as believable, someone close to you. But the paradigm, instead of being from the top down, shifted to horizontal, peer to peer. And that's gone on for about 10 years until the advent of fake news. And that channel is polluted. And what's that caused? A fundamental restructuring in the order of trust. Trust has become local this year. The new number one institution in trust in the world is my employer. I repeat, my employer. 25 points more trusted than any other institution. This is a revolution, folks, because it also puts a new responsibility on the CEO for leadership. More on that later. Let me try to construct the context of trust for 2019. What we observe is a situation where the mass class divide is back, and it's back in absolute force. Nowhere more than in the UK, where the gap between elite and mass opinion is 24 points, the largest gap we have ever seen in the history of our study. And we've done this 19 years. What's happened is mass trust is flatlined and elite trust is hockey stick. For those of you non-Canadians, that is like this. Um, and it is to do with rising stock portfolios, low taxes, less regulation, life is good for me. Well, it's not good for everybody, it's just good for the few. And the manifestation of this is not simply in Britain. It is true also in the United States again, it's true in France, it's true in Germany for the first time. It's also true for the first time in markets like India. It's starting to come in China. So the mass class divide is becoming pervasive. What you also need to understand is that it's somewhat premised on a gender gap. Women are less trusting of institutions than men, in particular in developed markets, worse in the United States and Germany than any other, and mostly loss of trust in business. 15-point gap in the US, 12-point gap in Germany. Women are upset about pay, Me Too, and very few women CEOs, and that cannot stand. There's also an obvious political aspect to trust my country, the T word, um, not testosterone, but close. Um, <laughs> bad joke. Um, but the reality is that Around media, Democrats 70% trust, Republicans 30. Business, Republicans 65% trust, Democrats 40s. World through two different lenses. The other point to be made about trust is to look at whether you expect the future to be better and whether you believe the system is working. Only one in five of our study of 38,000 people believes that the system is working. One in five people. And it's worse in the developed countries. One in seven in developed markets believes that the system is working. One in three believes that his or her family will be better off in five years. What are the fears that are causing this very dubious view of the, of the future? It was immigrants and now it's robots. In two years, we have seen a flip of the data so that fear has morphed into prospective loss of future income. It's almost as if people are calculating what's gonna happen with my stock portfolio, except it has to do with my personal life portfolio. 63% of people tell us, I'm afraid of losing my job to a robot. So it's not an immigrant, it's a robot. Now, what this is making people do is stand up, speak up, 
and demand change. 75% of people say, I demand change. There's a sense of injustice in the world. But there's also a desperate search for quality information. In one year, we have seen the shift from 50% of the people saying, I no longer engage with media because it's biased or it upsets me or it's elitist to 75% of people now engaging with media. So in one year, the shift is profound. People want the facts. They don't trust media, but they are engaging with media. And Jimmy Wales is here somewhere. They want quality information. They do not want facts that are dodgy, which is why the social channel is biased. So specifically, we've never seen such high numbers of trust in, in, in mainstream and search, but the lowest ever numbers for social. So it's social media that is dragging down the reputation of media altogether. Even if you go through social to get to mainstream, social is seen as a polluted channel. Now, transitioning to the most important facts of the day. My employer, trusted by 75% globally, 80% of people around the developed markets. Last man or woman standing is the my employer. Prime Minister Blair and I were talking just before. He said, I'm not really surprised by this. In a sense, this is a relationship you can control. You have a choice about your workplace just as you have a choice about the brands you buy every day. It is indicative of a world where so much uncertainty, I believe only that which is close to me. I believe those people close to me, friends, family, fellow employees, what I see is what I believe. Without that, there is no belief. There's also a fundamental change in expectations of CEOs. Three quarters of people tell us we want CEOs to stand up and act and not wait for government. And the things that we particularly want those CEOs to focus on are fair pay, retraining, diversity, and inclusion. We also would like CEOs to speak up on the economy, also on trade. So fill the void left by government, act on our behalf, and we're going to stand up on our own. So the gilet jaune in France, the reaction to Macron's tax, the women's wall in India, but more importantly, what's happening within companies, and it's particularly within tech companies. Notice that 20,000 people stood up and walked out at Google in November because they were upset about a large settlement for a Me Too case. Senior executive, not okay. We act, the company responds. Also at Salesforce, the people in the business refused to work on a project for the American Border Control Authority. They won't do it. They act. So the pyramid of authority used to be like this, and now it's like this. It's turned upside down. So as an employer, what do you get from trust at work? What you actually succeed in getting is much more loyalty from your employees, much more advocacy, much more engagement with the outside world. And if trust is built, it's going to be built from inside out. So we are actually proposing a new contract between employer and employee, which goes far beyond just writing a check. It actually calls for, number one, having a mission and a purpose and values that the company stands for. Two, that you actually inform your employees such that they can be the first out with information and that the information be objective, that the PR team not be advocates but become educators. Third, that the, the, the company has to focus on its local market, its headquarters, not just be a amorphous multinational. There are issues that business now needs to take on seriously, such as retraining, which need to be done in local market first and then outwards. And then fourth, the CEO has to stand up and be counted. And whether it's after something in my country, such as Charlottesville, or whether it's um, issues related to uh, LGBT, stand up and be counted. Now's your time. So in short, 
This new contract between employer and employee calls for a new kind of CEO who's willing to take the chance but understands that the greatest risk is not taking that chance.